This is a day to grieve, and it is a day to beg God for mercy, and it is a day to beg the Almighty for His kindness in the midst of judgment, because we are sealing our doom as a people. The Supreme Court of the United States yesterday ruled that the Texas laws requiring that a physician who murders babies in an abortion mill have privileges at a nearby hospital so that if there are complications, the doctor has to, and has to go to a hospital, which happens almost every day in America, that he has privileges there. He can practice there. Because a lot of times, abortionists will fly in, kill the babies, and fly out with a pocket full of money. That's just the way the abortion industry works. The Supreme Court struck down those laws. They had been upheld in lower circuits, and many of Texas abortion mills closed. So, this is a day to grieve because the blood of innocent babies is again, as it has been doing for over 40 years, it is crying out for vengeance to God. But there are sins that cry to God. So the blood of these babies cries out to God. All right? But the, the wickedness, the evil of Souter and Ginsburg and Kennedy, these, these Supreme Court justices who upheld, no, I'm sorry, that struck down the laws of Texas, these sins, these crimes against God and men, they will not go unpunished. When does it happen? I don't know. Did you know in the scriptures there is a record of the fact that Solomon, King David's son, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, except for our Lord Jesus himself, did you know that he caused one of his sons to pass through the fire? That's an expression. It means that he actually sacrificed, killed, offered to a demon god one of his own children. This is the one who built Solomon's temple, okay? Who gave us Proverbs, so many of the Proverbs. The day that Solomon ordered one of his sons to be sacrificed and put in fire, burned to death as a burnt offering to a demon god, the true God, the Almighty God, saw this. The angels that were with Solomon at that time, they saw it. Perhaps some of the angels in heaven that were watching were saying, no, Solomon, don't go through the, you know, saying, God, what is he doing? What is going on? I mean, there had to be a sense of horror and shock and revulsion. But there's no record that brimstone fell from the sky. No record that the earth opened up and swallowed up Solomon for his egregious demonic sin. Judgment came later. And some of this speaks of the, the long-suffering of God, the mercy of God, that he's slow to anger, for which we can all be thankful. But if you read 2 Kings chapter 24, when the, when the Lord sent the armies of the Babylonians to destroy Jerusalem and to destroy the temple that Solomon built, the temple that had the name of God, that had the Ark of the Covenant, if you read that passage, you see that it says that the Lord would not forgive the Lord would not forgive, that, that the Lord had had it to hear with the blood of babies crying out. And it was devastating. If you look at the record of what the Babylonians did to Judah and to the city of Jerusalem, to the inhabitants, it was brutal. And it didn't happen the day that Solomon offered his son as a as a sacrifice to a demon god. It happened hundreds of years later, but it happened. And these sins will not go unpunished. So whether the, and by the way, there is a temporary judgment and there's an eternal judgment. And some of these godless Supreme Court justices 
may escape justice in this world because there's no criminal mechanism at hand to try them for their crimes against humanity. But they will not escape the judgment of Almighty God. And there will be people there to witness against them and to testify. And then eternity will sort out what their punishment shall be.